Hi folks, hope you're okay today. It's good to be with you. Just uh, doing a little bit of a study on the Book of Esther. And uh, forgive me for the background noise. Uh, forgive me for that. Uh, so we're going to look at the book of Esther. I'm just going to pray, and I uh, hope it's a blessing to you, and uh, an encouragement to you, and uh, just enjoy it, and try and get what you can out, even though there's a bit of background noise. Okay, let's come before the Lord. Father God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your glory and your blessings. And Father, we pray as we look at the book of Esther that you will bless, and uh, we pray that you will bless it and seal it to our hearts by the power of your Holy Spirit. We ask this, Lord, in your name. And for your glory, Amen. Okay, just uh, some background information before we look at the Book of Esther. This is in the study notes of my Bible. I have my own Bible study notes at home, but I'm here and I'm doing it from memory. So I'm, the Bible study is from memory. Uh, but, so I'm going to read these notes. It says the Book of Esther is a remarkably different biblical book because neither the Word of God nor the name Yahweh Lord occurs in the Hebrew text. The scene is Shushan, Susa, the winter capital of Persia, not Israel. The book concerns the marriage of its Jewish heroine with a king, Gentile king, and it solves the problem of an incipient antisemitism by a body of self-defense, which is even repeated on the following, by a bloody self-defense, which is even repeated on the following day by Esther's request. Even though the name of God is nowhere mentioned in the book, his sovereignty and providence are evident throughout. Vashti's dismissal, Esther's regal position, Xerxes' indebtedness to Mordecai, discovered during a sleepless night, and the miraculous deliverance of the Jews all demonstrate God's control and care for his people. Psalm 121, verse 4. The book also explains the origin of the Feast of Purim, 2 Maccabees 1536, and on the 13th and 14th days of Adar, February and March, when Jews celebrate the deliverance from Haman. A third theme is evident that of anti-semitism when fully developed uh, animosity towards jews results in genocide the attempt to, to exterminate the race the satanic scheme is probably much older than the time of haman in moses day pharaoh attempted to exterminate the hebrew slaves historical setting the events of the book over 10 year portion from 483 to 473 bc of the reign of Xerxes the first 486 to 465 bc azorus is the hebrew form of this name equivalent to the Persian Kasharasha and the Greek Exerces. The events occurred between those recorded in the sixth and seventh chapters of Ezra. Authorship. The book gives no hint of who wrote it, but some say it's Mordecai. So that's a little bit of background to the to the book. So we're going to read Esther chapter one, uh, Esther chapter four. And from Esther chapter four, we're going to bring out three points or four points maybe three it says in esther chapter four when mordecai perceived all that was done mordecai rent his clothes and put on a sackcloth with ashes and went out into the midst of the city and cried with a loud voice and a bitter cry it came even before the king's gate for none might enter into the king's gate clothed with sackcloth and in every province wherever the king's commandment and his decree came there was great mourning among the jews and fasting and weeping and wailing, and many lay in sackcloth and ashes. So Esther's maids and her chamberlains came and told it to her. Then was the queen exceedingly grieved, and she rent, sent raiment to clothe Mordecai and take away his sackcloth from him. But he received it not. Then called Esther for Ham Esther to Hatak, one of the king's chamberlains, whom he had appointed to attend upon her and give him a commandment to Mordecai to know what it was and why it was. So Hattach went forth to Mordecai into the street of the city which was before the king's gate. And Mordecai told him of all that had happened unto him and of the sum of the money that Haman had promised to pay to the king's treasury for the Jews to destroy them. Also he gave him the copy of the writing of the decree that was given at Sushan to destroy them to show it unto Esther and to declare it unto her, and to charge her, that she should go in unto the king to make supplication unto him, and to make request before him for her people. And Hatchach came and told Esther of the words of Mordecai. Again Esther spoke unto Hatach and gave him commandment unto Mordecai. All the king's servants and the people of the king's province do know that whatsoever a man or woman shall come unto the king into the inner court who is not called, there is one law of his to put him to death except such to whom the king shall hold out the golden scepter that he may live but i have not 
been called to come in unto the king through these 30 days. And they told Mordecai Esther's words. Then Mordecai commanded to answer Esther, Think not with thyself that thou shalt escape in thy king's house more than all the Jews. For if thou altogether holdest thy peace at this time, then shall their enlargement deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. But thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed. And who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this? Then Esther bird, uh, bade them return Mordecai this answer. Go gather together all the Jews that are present in Sushan and fast for me, and neither eat nor drink three days, nor night or day. Also, and my maidens will fast likewise, and so will I go in unto the king, which is not according to the law. And if I perish, I perish. So Mordecai went his way and did according to all that Esther had commanded him. Okay, so the story of the book of Esther is an amazing story. As is mentioned God's name is not mentioned in it but the whole power of God in his providence and care of history can be seen in this book so we have the story of uh, Queen Vashti and she's been brought out by exorcists and paraded uh, before his uh, kings and this Persian emperor as he's doing this Vashti would not do it she would not lower herself so uh, his servant said, get rid of Vashti and get a new queen. So he gets a new queen and he gets Esther. Esther is a Jew. Esther has a, a relative called Mordecai. Meanwhile, Haman, uh, a Persian general, is rising up the ranks and he hates the Jews and he decides to get them killed and arranges for a massacre. Mordecai learns of this and goes to Esther to tell her what's happened. Esther says, I'll go in and see the king. The people fast and pray before she goes in, the Jewish people. She goes and sees the king and asks for help. Uh, what help would she, she like? Meantime, uh, the king uh, realizes that Mordecai in the past had helped him. So he asks Haman to come in and Haman says, yes, master, what do you want? And Haman said, what would you do to, to uh, bless a man who, who's been a blessing to me? And Haman, thinking it's himself, says, you know, ride through the streets and uh, exalt him. So Haman said, well, do that for Mordecai. So Haman, he wanted to, he hated Mordecai, hated the Jews, had to celebrate Mordecai while he's doing that. Meanwhile, Haman builds a gallow and gets a gallow ready because he's going to get, he gets the king's, the, the, the emperor's permission to kill all the Jewish people. And he gets a gallow ready so that he can kill Mordecai. Yeah. One day he comes into the palace to see the king because he's invited to a meal with Esther and the king. And the king asks Esther what she wants. And Esther tells her that Haman has tried to kill, get the Jews killed and could you save her people. Esther, uh, the emperor, is angry at Haman and then he gets Haman to be hanged on the gallows. And the people, the Jewish people, are able to defend themselves against any attacks that come because the Empress said they could defend themselves. So that's the story of the Book of Esther, uh, and it's an amazing story. It's a, it, 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 it's a wonderful book, and I would encourage you to read it. Um, but I'm going to give you three points that I found a blessing. First of all, the courage of Esther. We read. If you turn to uh, uh, Esther chapter 4, verse 15, go gather to. Then Esther bade them return Mordecai this answer. Verse 16, go gather together all the Jews that are present in Shushan and Fashi for me. Neither eat nor drink three days, night or day. I also and my maidens will fast likewise, so will I go in unto the king. Now, she's saying, pray for me, I'm going to go and see the king. Now, if you went and saw the king without permission, you get killed. And she's going without permission. So if he puts his scepter out, she's safe. But if he doesn't, she's dead. So she's putting her life in jeopardy for the people of God. The people of God are in a mess. She's going to intercede for them to talk to the, her husband, the emperor. And she could lose her life. But she does it. She has courage. We think of Caleb, who said at an old age, give me this mountain. He had courage even in his old age. We think of Joshua, we go to the book of Joshua. Yeah, yeah. 
Okay. Come with me to the book of Joshua, okay. chapter 1. Yeah. It's good if you have your Bible out, folks. Check what the preacher's saying. Always check what the preacher's saying. Never take it for granted that the preacher is right. You have to check what they say. In verse 7, Joshua chapter 1, verse 7. Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses and my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest, whither thou so ever goest. This book, verse 8, of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. But then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Verse 9, have not I commanded thee? Be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. So the courage of Esther, she had courage. I think in Galatians chapter 1, Paul says, Cursed is anyone that preaches not the gospel. But he was a man of courage. He was a man who defended the faith. He was a man who stood up for truth. He says in Philippians, for me to live is Christ, to die is gain. He was a man in prison when he wrote that, when he said rejoice. And again, I say rejoice. He was a man in prison. Yet he was a fearless, inde indefatigable in the defense of the faith. Even in the book of Galatians, he had to stand up against Peter. That was the character of Paul. He was a defender of the faith, a man of courage. Read the chapter 11 of Hebrews. Let's turn to chapter 11 of Hebrews. Chapter 11 of Hebrews. It says, Sorry about that. So, the book of Hebrews, it says, Hebrews chapter 11, Therefore sprang there even one of him, as good as dead, as many as the stars of the sky in multitude, as the sand which is the seashore innumerable. These all died in faith, not having received the promise, but having seen them afar off and were persuaded of them and embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims. But they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. And truly, if they had been mindful of the country from whence they came out, they might have had opportunity to have returned. But now they desire a better country that is a heavenly, heavenly one. Wherefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he had prepared for them a city by faith abraham when he was tried offered up isaac and he that received the promises offered up his only begotten son these were people of courage if you read the book of hebrews chapter 11 read the people of faith who stood for god verse 32 and what shall i say more say for the time will not fail me to tell of gideon and of barak and of samson and of japheth of david also and samuel and of the prophets yeah. So Esther, first of all, was a woman of courage. Are you a man, a woman of courage? At school, at college, at university, make a stand for, for Jesus. Make a stand. Don't get discouraged. Don't don't get dis discouraged. Um, just make a stand for the Lord and and and, and stand up for it for your God, yeah? Secondly, I can remember the second point. Esther and her home. Mordecai said in uh, Esther chapter 4, verse 13, Then Mordecai commanded to answer Esther, Think not with thyself that thou shalt escape in the king's house more than all the Jews. For if thou altogether holdest thy peace at this time, then shall the enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. But thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed, and knowest whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this. She was there for such a time as this. You're there where you are for such a time as this. Esther and her home, because she knew where she was to be in the palace. 
then she knew that was her calling. She knew she could operate from a basis of strength, knowing that that is where God wanted her to be. And so therefore she could do what God wanted her to do. If you know where you were to be, then you can do what you were called to do. If you would know that you're to live in a house, or if you know that you're to work in a workplace or to be in a church, if you know that that is where God has put you, then you can do the things that God wants you to do. So, where does God put you? Is that where God wants you? And if that's where God wants you, stick at it and don't give up. Keep going. If God has called you to a church, and that is, you know where you're to be in that church, then don't leave that church. Don't go from that church. Keep serving in that church. But if you don't know if you're to be in that church, then ask God to where he wants you to go. In same in ministry. If God wants you in ministry and that's where he wants you to go, then trust him and he will help you in that ministry. So if that's what God wants for you in your life, where you should be, then God will be with you. Yeah? He will be with you. All right. So we have Esther and her courage, Esther and her home, and then finally, Esther and her God. They fasted and prayed. In verse 16, Go gather together all the Jews that are present in Shushan and fast ye for me, and neither eat nor drink three days, night or day. Also and my maidens will fast likewise, and so will I go in unto the king, which is not according to the law. And if I perish, I perish. If I perish, I perish. Fast and pray. Fast and pray. Esther believed in the dramatic intervention of God, that God made the difference in her life, that God would make a difference in the history of the Jews, that God would make a hit difference in the history of Persia, because God moved in Persia in the Empress Palace in order to do the work that he wanted to do. God uses nations and kings and queens, and he uses emperors, he uses... He uses uh, prime ministers and presidents, he uses armies, he uses enemies, he uses everything and everybody for his plan and his purposes. God is a dramatic God who can intervene in your life. So what challenges you face today in your life? No matter how big they are, God can move mightily in your situation. You have to have faith in him, trust him, believe in him and rest in him. It says, those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Let's turn to Psalm 34, and we'll call it a day on the scriptures. Psalm 34, let's turn to Psalm 34. I will bless the Lord, verse 1. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mind. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. I saw the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from my fears. So go to him, rest in him, trust in him, and he will deliver you. He will deliver your work situation, he'll deliver your ministry, he'll deliver your relationship situation. He will deliver you. You rest in him. Don't fret, don't worry. Let's turn to Psalm 37. It says in verse 3, Psalm 37, Trust in the Lord and do good, so thou shalt dwell in the land, and verily shalt thou be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thy heart. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. Trust, rest, not to him. And he will guide you. Okay? So, Three points, Esther and her courage, Esther and her home, and Esther and her God. Let's close. Father God, we thank you for this day. We give you the prayers and the glory and the honor, and we acknowledge that you are our King and our God today. We magnify your name and say that thou art a great God, a great Savior, and a great Lord. We praise you, Lord, and we adore you, Lord. And Father God, we know that thou art King and thou art great. And we pray that you be in this day. And bless our brothers and sisters and all those that need you today. Meet their need today as they read your word and as they look to you, Lord. Feed them with the bread of heaven. Feed them with your word and strengthen them in their faith, Lord, that they may grow strong in you on the milk and the meat of the word. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you.
and uh, see you soon. I'm going to do a couple of videos now, and uh, hope to see you soon. God bless.